Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today I'm going to be using one of the new collage sheets from Natalie May Scrapbooking um, and using some primary colours. So this is a gorgeous sheet from Natalie May. She's been doing all these amazing collage ladies at the moment and gentlemen, um, which I've been loving using because they're just so rich and the faces are just captivating. So to keep the face as light as possible, um, I just gesso the face bit of the background um, and that just helps keep uh, the face from being lost, I suppose, if I stuck it down onto a coloured background. In the case that I'm doing here, it really wouldn't have mattered, but I may have seen some of the lines in the background that I may not have wanted to see. Now, the thing I'm really loving about these is because you've got that hint of background already. And one of my favourite things to do is to challenge myself to try and replicate it. It's a really good way to practice your painting skills, um, to practice your colour mixing. Just <laughs> There's so many reasons why you should have a go at doing it. Um, and I just am really, really loving it. So I'm, my goal is, I suppose, is to try and incorporate the image into the page so much that you can't really see where my painting starts and stops and the image's painting starts and stops, if that makes sense. Um, so I've chosen colours very similar to the colours used in the background and they just happen to be um, very primary colours. So yellow, red and blue. Different shades of, but that's where we're going from. And basically I'm just using a very short, very firm brush. This one is from Dina Wakely and I've found it's the best brush for doing this. I think because it's got very short bristles and it's very firm, you can get really painterly lines from it. So I start off in the background um, with the reds, then I've built up with the blues and the yellows, and then I'm going back in and adding some more colours again. And you can sort of see me going back and adding in. The other thing that I'm in it, um, doing is adding more colour onto her body because obviously um, that needed to be finished off as well. Now, to be honest, I wasn't necessarily happy with what I'd done on, on, in this background, even though it matched and I can't really see where the image begins and ends anymore. Um, primary colours <laughs> together, especially when I was working wet and wet, you can st start to see it looks a little bit muddy. So you just need to be really, really careful. Now, I could have avoided a lot of that if I had made sure every coat that I put down was dry first, so that I was working dry on dry. By working wet and wet, obviously you're gonna get some colors blending. I did notice, however, when I started to put in the contrast color with the turquoise onto her hair, that just helped push everything back out again and make her a focus. I think also when I finished off her body, that helped as well. Um, and you can see the body is not just one colour. There is a lot of colours mixed in to, to create that colour. Um, and I think that's something we often forget when we're doing paintings, particularly of skin tones and so on, that, you know, nothing is one colour. It's made up of many, many, many different colours. I'm just going in with a little bit of my Stabilo or pencil just to get some shadows in and again to push her out from the background a little bit. Also going in with my white paint pen just to add a few highlights. When I was looking at this, I just, I needed something to tie it together. It wasn't sitting right with me. And I don't think I did the right thing by doing this stenciling over the top, because I don't think that worked either. Um, but I did decide that I was going to put some white over the top. And I've used this bubble print, or bubble tape, I think, from Natalie May's stencils as well. Um, Love this stencil, it's got nothing to do with the stencil. I just don't think the white over the top helped, but you know, it kind of did calm it down, it kind of did give it a texture. I'm just not 100% sold on it, so that was a bit that was bugging me. I was doing this, so I was sort of sitting there looking at it, going, hmm, is it right? Is it not? In the end, I decided to finish it. I decided to take the advice of uh, the great Leonardo da Vinci. I was lucky enough to go and see the Loom exhibit in Melbourne recently. And one of the quotes that came up um, as this beautiful artwork was floating around in the air is, um, art is never finished, it's only abandoned. And this piece was definitely abandoned because 
I don't think it's finished. There's, there's just something about the background that just doesn't sit well with me. Um, maybe one day I'll come back and, and work it out, but at the moment it's still a work in progress because it's just not the way I want it to be at the moment. Um, <clears throat> however, like I was really pleased with how I blended it all together and so on. I think it's just the colours um, that I used. So I, it's funny how you get things like that. Um, but the image itself is just so beautiful that I don't really care because I'm, I'm really happy to have it in my journal. So that sort of went <laughs> to the, the quote that I chose as well. We all get knocked down. It's getting up again that counts. Just because I've got a page that I'm not 100% happy with doesn't mean I'm not going to journal again. Not going to mean I'm going to give up. I'm going to keep going. This is just practice. Um, and even though it's a page that, you know, the background itself doesn't sit necessarily comfortably with me um, doesn't mean that I didn't learn a lot by doing this page um, by learning which brush that works the best or how that I should be drawing the layers in between or that I was able to mix so many colors to make the skin tone all those things um, so always if you're not 100% happy with what you've done look for Look for the things that you've learned to look for the things that did go well on your page. Sometimes we are very hard in ourselves, so um, it's, it's important to look for the positives. So once I've finished doing my highlights on my letters, <laughs> you can sort of see me going, oh, is it, isn't it, is it? Fingers tapping there going, I don't know. And then I just decide to, to call it a day. Oh, no, I don't. I decide to sp <laughs> splatter over it. <laughs> there you go. So I thought maybe splattering over it would help, but it really didn't. Um, so I've got some gold splatter in the background, which again, because the colours are quite um, bold, that you don't actually really see the gold very much on it. So there's a beautiful image from Natalie May and how it's being glued on. And there's the whole piece that I finished off doing with the quote down at the bottom. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned out something from this. It is fun using different colours and and. You know, primary colours are tricky to use, um, but when it all works out, it, go it goes okay. Until the next time, bye for now.